Molecules that are particularly asymmetric have the special property of being chiral. Chiral molecules are unique in that they possess an enantiomer, and one of the most common chiral objects that you probably look at every day are your hands. Your hands possess enantiomers. In fact, they're enantiomers of each other. Each one individually is chiral in that it possesses an enantiomer, and they possess an enantiomeric relationship. In fact, another word for chirality that means the exact same thing is handedness. And chirality is just the property of handedness. Here's an example of two molecules that are enantiomers of one another. It's the example we've been looking at throughout this series of videos. We can say that as a relationship, the two molecules are enantiomers of one another, right? They're mirror images and they're non-superimposable. But individually, the fact that each molecule possesses an enantiomer is a sign that the two molecules are chiral. If a molecule is not chiral, we say that it's achiral, or lacking chirality. Such molecules are superimposable on their mirror images. In other words, they're identical to their mirror images, and so they don't possess enantiomers. It's not possible to generate a mirror image of the molecule that is not the same as the molecule itself. Here are two examples of achiral molecules. The left-hand example is toluene. And what you can see is that if toluene looks at itself in a mirror, then what it sees is going to be exactly the same as what it is, right? These two molecules are perfectly superimposable on one another. They are homomers of each other. To be achiral, a molecule doesn't have to be completely flat. Three-dimensional molecules can be achiral as well, and here's an example on the right. This amine is an achiral compound. When it looks at itself in a mirror, the mirror image is perfectly superimposable on the original. Thus, the two so-called enantiomers are actually one and the same molecule. So the question may come to your mind, how can we determine if a molecule is chiral or achiral? Do we have to go through this process of generating the mirror image and then trying to superimpose them as best we can, which seems like it might be kind of a long and laborious process? Well, the short answer is no, although this process of generating the mirror image will always work for determining whether a molecule is chiral or achiral. In fact, instead of doing that every time, all we really have to do is look for either planes of symmetry or inversion centers. I won't say too much about inversion centers here, but a molecule that possesses a plane of symmetry is definitely achiral and identical to its mirror image. A plane of symmetry is a plane that we can place within a molecule such that all of the groups on the left-hand side of the plane are in the same position as the groups on the right-hand side of the plane, and if we reflected the molecule through that plane, we would generate a molecule that looks exactly the same as what we started with. So what we see in this amine is that a plane that sort of coincides with the C in bond and bisects the molecule is a plane of symmetry. Reflection through that plane would push this H over to here, this H would come back here, the methyl group on the left would go to the right, and vice versa, and nothing on the plane would move. So the nitrogen and the carbon would just sit there and be happy, as well as the hydrogen that's implied here in the back. This is a plane of symmetry of this structure. Similarly for toluene, if I draw it kind of in a stylized form, where one of the hydrogens is coming out, and two of them are going back away from us. Now, a plane of symmetry that contains that CH and bisects the ring, like this, is a plane of symmetry of the molecule. These H's would be interconverted by that reflection, as would all of the carbons down in the ring here. And again, nothing on the plane would move. Real-life objects can be achiral too. In fact, all kinds of real-life objects are achiral. Look around you for things that possess a plane of symmetry. Maybe you have a pencil nearby. Pencils, at least in their idealized form, possess a plane of symmetry coffee cups possess a plane of symmetry, typically. Now the plane of the screen is a plane of symmetry. Achiral objects are all over the place, and all of them possess either planes of symmetry or inversion centers.